What's up everybody? Old guy jamming here with the chassis pull, Blackstar HT50. The uh, EL34 tubes would normally be right here, but I pulled them out so I didn't break them. A lesson I had to learn the hard way. We'll get you down in here real close pretty soon. Uh, not a lot of serviceable stuff in this. A huge amount of surface mount technology, which is to be expected these days. What I was hoping to find was some trim pots that would allow me to lower the boost dBs because when I use the boost, it's just a little bit much for me. I'd like it to be less. And I was also hoping to maybe find some trim pots to adjust the volume jump when you go from the voice one to voice two on either one of the channels. It looks like they just have a preset or a predetermined amount of gain that they boost the channel with, boost the signal with when you go from, you know, like a dirty channel when you go from uh, voice one to voice two. There's such a sizable volume increase or drop, depending on which way you go, that it's not usable to me. Uh, and the same thing for the clean. You can't go to that overdriven clean tone without there being a real big volume increase which is such a shame because it could have been a four channel amp and it's still only really just a two channel amp anyway I did not find any trim pots um, but I did find a whole lot more surface mount than I thought I would all right so we'll dive in here in just a second all right I've got the HT50 circuit board pulled out of the chassis. This is the knob sides, so that's the front. Over here we have the outputs. Speakers, foot switch, different speaker loadings, effects loop. I tried to do this on a nice JVC camera and then couldn't figure out, it's an older camera, couldn't figure out how to get the video off the camera, so I'm using my iPad. Right up in here, we've got the First uh, part of the power section, that's where we plug it into the wall. A couple of nice jacks right here, some lugs, quarter inch lugs for 230 volt wiring in case you're wiring this up over in uh, England or overseas somewhere. These are the output jacks for our speakers and different ohm loads. Nice heavy solder connections, nice thick wires and uh, really nice jacks too. They, uh, they didn't skimp on the jacks. Nice, tight, a nice, tight, snug fit once you uh, plug your cords in. Power sections right here. This is where we develop some clean electricity. DC voltage from our AC voltages. Not a whole lot of serviceable, serviceable parts, though. There's not a lot in this thing that you're going to be able to service. Got some fast action fuses right here. You'll be able to get in and check those out. Large filter caps, takes the ripple out of our AC. A couple of really large um, power resistors, no coloration, although I haven't had this thing on much. Um, I used it for a couple of weeks and decided I really didn't care for it compared to the Marshall. And so it's up on the chopping block. But there's our power section. Regulated power section, turning all this AC into DC voltage. Got three voltage regulators down here hooked to a really nice big power or not power supply but heat sink which means they're going to stay nice and cool which is good we don't want heat in solid state stuff heat's a killer if your tubes get hot that's a good thing but uh, solid state stuff does not work well with heat um Back here, we've got, I uh, think, these four diodes right here probably make up the rectification, full bridge rectification. Um, and then, moving on, these are DC voltage. DC voltage power supply for all this DC circuitry. Uh, plus or minus 15 volts, looks like the bus voltage there. Also, I think there's some uh, effects loop stuff with an effects uh, send and return label there anyway. 
One thing about this is it's labeled up really nice. Um, lots of test points and labeling. Uh, you can see we've got uh, a nice test point right there. Test point 19, and this is under one of the 12AX7s. Test point 7, negative 12.6 volts. Uh, this is the other 12AX7 over here. The board is labeled real nice. Um, and you know, here's field effect transistor 3, field effect transistor 4. Those are some small FETs. Transistor 9 up in here, transistor 11, um, just really nicely labeled, but are you going to be able to get in here and do a whole lot of work? I don't think so. Here's another test point over here, 50 millivolts at test point 13. Um, the uh, board back in here, right here. This is where the EL34 tubes connect to. It's mounted separately. Uh, nice big connectors for that. Not a whole lot going on in here, but a whole lot of integrated circuits. These looked like, come back here, where were we? Um, these are transistor 14 and transistor 13. So those might be FETs, field effect transistors, or some CMOS type deals. If I wanted to bend this forward, I could probably get a read on the number of that chip. And you could look it up in a data book and perhaps run a diode test through it if you were having a problem. Sometimes on these type of packages, like this one up here, and uh, this one here, these guys, field effect transistors or CMOS type deals. Uh, you'll get lucky sometimes if you run a diode test from the center leg out to each outside leg or from one leg to the other two. Again, you kind of need a data sheet to figure that out. But another drawback with those is you usually have to pull them out of circuit to test them that way so that you don't end up testing a diode or a resistor that's next to it in the same circuit, which is kind of pain, uh, a pain in the butt, but it can be done. Uh, then over here, this is an interesting board. It's got a, like a brain looking thing right here, some sort of array perhaps or a logic unit. This side's labeled A through P. Up here is numbers 1 through 14 incredibly small stuff just incredibly small lots of voltages listed here as well as milliamps um, I don't know if this is some sort of test jack but these are pins this PC board here plugs right into the main board and I believe this is where we find um, the interface to our foot switch up here right back in here is the foot switch um, connector. This is the two button switch and the five button switch over here. And then on this, you see all sorts of SW labelings. And uh, it's LEDs, a ring, tip voltage, ring voltage, line, BBD line, power, switch reverb, switch. Uh, and then down in here, we also have a switch boost on this string of wires. Um, there's reverb, it looks like. Effects return wire right there. Clean, here's our 3.2 boost. Um, another switch and then a couple of plus 15 volts. Anyway, I have a feeling this is that five way, that five button push switch control center. And I was hoping to find a trim pot or two or even three to uh, because the boost is really hot for me I think it's too much and I was hoping for be, to be able to trim that as well as if you're switching from the you know the green the undriven tone on the clean channel to the undriven tone on the dark channel the dirty channel 
it's fine. But if you want to switch from the clean, undriven clean to the the red, the overdriven on the dirty channel, there's a really fairly large volume boost. And so it makes it, it takes it from being a potential four channel amp to being no more than a two channel amp, uh, which is too bad. It'd be nice to have unity gain between all those channels. And then it would be, you know, a completely different, completely different deal. But not a whole lot of serviceable, serviceable things in here. You've got those three fast blue oak fuses, a couple of CMOS devices that you might get lucky with. But otherwise, you your best bet's going to be able. Uh, best bet's going to be to identify a bad board and just replace the board. It's no wonder you can't find people to work on these. All right, so that's the printed circuit board. Uh, not nearly like the ones in the igniter. The uh, igniter boards are by far the best I've seen so far.